Oh, you guys, the holidays are a lot. <laughs> The holidays are so much. It's not you. The holidays are a lot. Oh, we're going to go into five different aspects of the holidays, what we can run into, and how to best approach them today. Hi, my name is Sarah. We are here with Catholic Match, and we talk all things dating and relationships. I've made tons of videos about many different kinds of topics, and if you have any new ideas or things you want me to dive into further, leave them in the comments below. Make sure if you like this video that you give it a thumbs up and that you follow us here on YouTube at Catholic Match so that you can see all my future videos. <laughs> we are going to talk about, I think, very important things that we can walk into when it comes to the holiday season and being single or being in a relationship. Number one is meeting the parents. This is a very big thing, right? Meeting the parents. It's a very big jump. I know relationships that they've been dating for a week or you know, two weeks, three weeks, and then they meet the significant other's parents. I have also known people that have been dating for months and still haven't met the significant other's parents. It totally differs from relationship to relationship, and that is completely up to you to decide when to make that jump. The holidays are not surefire reason to meet the parents, but it's also a great opportunity, right? Because all family is being seen and it's a good thing to move forward if that's what you want to do. The best piece of advice that I have that was given to me, that I've given to other girlfriends that I've seen so much fruit come from when it comes to meeting the parents is before you meet the parents, asking your significant other about their parents and talking about who their parents are, what they like, what they don't like, their relationship as a married couple, your significant other's relationship with their parents. These are all very good pieces of context to have so that you're not walking in blind. You're walking in sure that you know different dynamics that are going on and can carry on more as who you are and more as yourself because you're educated about what, what you're walking into. There are people that have very, very, very good relationships with their parents. And that is amazing. And those people are very lucky. And there are people that have very complicated, even broken relationships with their parents. And that can be really difficult. And it just adds a whole other layer to the holiday season when relationships are broken or strained in any way. And as the significant other, it is so good to know these things before you walk into that situation. Number two, handling the stress and pressure of all the questions that the same aunt, or uncle, grandparents, cousins, whatever have you, is gonna ask about your dating life. <laughs> and it can be really difficult, right? Because you've gotten these questions year after year and you feel like you just give the same answers and you're not happy about it or you just don't wanna talk about it at all. And I have two things about this. Number one, People are going to ask. You can't stop them. <laughs> People are going to ask because they haven't seen you and they want to know more about you. And it's a hot topic about your love life. And as difficult as it can be, you can't stop people from asking those questions as much as you don't want to. Now, the good part of that is that that's actually really empowering because in knowing that, you cannot be blindsided because you know people are gonna ask those questions. The second part to this is that you have complete power over how much emphasis you put on this topic. You can be as short and sweet as you want or you can totally dive into everything that's been going on or not going on and you have complete power over how you want to navigate the intensity of the topic. It is not within their hands how much you want to talk about this, go over it, dwell. It's within yours. Number three, what to wear. I know that, that can be a really silly thing, but it's totally the truth. You freak out about you know, what's appropriate. I think what's appropriate is something that you're not constantly fidgeting with. I think that is a very good rule of thumb that I found to be for myself that if I am wearing something that I am not like totally pulling or stretching or adjusting all night because I'm self-conscious, 
this is not the night to be self-conscious when you're meeting new people, especially your significant other's parents and family and um, or coworkers or whatever have you. You don't need to be self-conscious about what you're wearing. And so I would wear something that you're not constantly pulling or adjusting or any of that. You're wearing something that you feel beautiful in, but that you don't have to mess with. Number four, what to bring. I love this question because the answer is never empty hands. We always want to bring something with us, whether that is a baked good or something to eat, a simple bouquet of flowers and a bottle of wine. If the family doesn't drink, maybe you just bring a bouquet of flowers and a dessert that you baked, or you ask ahead of time if you can bring a side dish and you call your mom or your sister or your aunt for their best recipe and we'll throw that in the mix. Number five is awkwardness in meeting family. I know that it can be very awkward. I myself can fall into very awkward situations when I'm in uncharted territory. And so I'm right there with you that it can be very awkward. But I do want to say that when it comes to trying to be this perfect person or trying to be the perfect spouse, the perfect significant other, the one that you think your significant other's parents want to see, you are doing everyone in the room a disservice. That there is a reason your significant other likes you and is still dating you and wants you to meet their parents and you need to stare that fact down the barrel and stay with it and not lose sight of it. You are doing a disservice to those people around you and to yourself by pretending to be someone that you're not or by putting on a little show. I think that it is so worth your while to do your best and focus on the fact that you do not have to put on a show for anyone else that your significant other likes you for who you are and that God willing, they're parents, their family, because your significant other likes you, will also like that in you. And it's a big risk to take, don't get me wrong, but you don't want to go back and need to correct things that you set up the first time you met them. That's just so much work. That just sounds like so much work. But overall, I would like to say that the holidays are a lot. It is not you. It's overwhelming. There's a lot of things, a lot of newness, maybe a lot of oldness, a lot of old feelings and hurts and disappointments. And I want to leave you with the fact that you have the power to make a big deal out of something or to make it a small deal. You have the power to put a lot of meaning into something, a lot of, of reliability or pressure or emphasis, or to just kind of let it right off your back. It is not up to other people to set the situation and how you feel about certain things. If you are single and you've been single for a really long time and you're upset about it, that's okay. But other people do not have the power to make you more upset or more hurt. That's up to you. That is totally within your power, totally within your grasp that you can say these people are operating from a place that is not my mind and that is not my heart. And therefore they do not get to dictate what goes on in my mind and what goes on in my heart. With that, please let me know how the holidays are going for you. If they're going really well, if they're completely different from last year or the exact same, I would love to hear everything about it. With that being said, my name is Sarah and I hope to see you guys again next time. See ya.